Okay, let's take a look a little bit at taxicab geometry a little bit more. And, uh, of course, we have a couple of things here about taxicab geometry. And we know how the uh, um, distance metric works. And we also know what circles are. So take a look at this. Here we have uh, concentric circles. The green dotted ones are Euclidean. Uh, circles and they are um, centered at the origin and they're spaced out in spaces of, of uh, going up by one each time. The solid line ones are taxicab circles. So notice that we have, uh, by moving this point, I can take, essentially we take a number line or a coordinate system for Euclidean and here it is and the nice thing about Euclidean is we can spin this coordinate this around and we can measure distance in a consistent way uh, in any direction. But look what happens when we spin around a taxicab ruler. If we're on the x-axis it matches with the Euclidean ruler. But as we go here, look what happens to the to the ruler, how, how far in terms of Euclidean distance, how far apart the uh, ruler is. So you have to have a ruler that sort of spreads out or, or comes in uh, as far as Euclidean distance goes to measure in it as you move this around. So that's something that's interesting about that, that, dis that metric. Uh, here's circles. We already know about this. Now, uh, the shortest distance uh, from a point to a line is uh, in Euclidean geometry is from where the perpendicular is drawn. Okay? And so if we want to measure the, the distance from point E to this line, the shortest distance is this distance G. So if we take this anywhere here, look at the distance, um, and we did Euclidean distances, the shortest distance would be this where there's a perpendicular. But notice that's not necessarily true here. The perpendicular distance is 1.72. Can we get smaller than that? Look at that. We can get smaller than that right here. Or we can get smaller than that maybe some other places. So where is the short the place where it's the shortest distance? And uh, the shortest distance is going to be... Um, is either a vertical or horizontal distance. So if the slope of the line is between 1 and negative 1, so it's, it's more vertical than horizontal, the shortest distance is going to be that horizontal one. So the smallest I can make this is that 3.21, which happens right there when it's horizontal. Okay. On the other hand, if that line has slope a uh, lesser slope, slope zero or slope something absolute value close to zero, then the shortest distance, shortest of all these distances, is going to be the one that's vertical, not the perpendicular distance. So notice this is very different than um, than some of the other geometries that we've done. Okay. So even though in one hand it it kind of may appear like it looks more like Euclidean geometry than than uh, hyperbolic, really hyperbolic geometry, and spherical for that matter, actually operate much more like uh, each other than they do like taxicab in many, many ways. So there's an unusual, unusual thing about taxicab geometry. Well, because of that, or because of something similar, the longest side is not necessarily opposite the longest, largest angle. That's a result that we have in unified geometry that's not true for taxicab um, look here, here's the shortest side and it's, uh, it is opposite the shortest, the smallest angle right at the moment, but the longest side is not opposite the longest angle. Okay, and then of course I think we can probably get, uh, we may be able to get the shortest side not opposite the shortest angle either. Let's see, smallest angle, here, here we go. Here's the, uh, whoops. Okay, here's one where that's the smallest angle. 
but that's the so the the middle size angle is opposite the the smallest side. So the longest side is not necessarily opposite the largest angle. The largest the smallest side is not necessarily opposite the smallest angle. So um, that scaling inequality does not work necessarily. Okay, here's some some iso here's an isosceles triangle um, that we can we can work with here. So we can make a general isosceles triangle. Pretty easy to make. It follows the same basic setup as a uh, same basic setup that you get on a um, just as you do it in Euclidean or hyperbolic. And you just make a circle, and then the congruent sides will go from the center of the circle to the to the line there. But it doesn't necessarily have to have any congruent angles. So here's the here's the two congruent sides here. But look at the angles here, and you see that they're all three different angles. And we can make them actually quite a bit different if we uh, kind of experiment with them here a bit. You know, so there you can get quite a bit different angles. Equilateral triangle. Um, this one is equilateral, and how can you make an equilateral triangle? You make two congruent circles and find where they intersect. And notice this is set up so that this is equilateral then. Okay, so various places where these intersect here. And actually to make all these intersections I had to do, uh, this is actually several different triangles that one, one disappears as the other appears in the actual construction. But notice that, you know, for example, stop it here. Um, the, uh, the sides are all congruent, but the angles are definitely not. So equilateral triangles don't have to have any uh, congruent angles. Okay, what about triangles with congruent angles? Here's a triangle with two congruent angles, and of course I used the what I did, um, I did actually didn't make it with congruent angles via uh, rotations, which I probably could have or maybe even should have, but I used a, made sure it was a Euclidean isosceles triangle, so it has to have congruent angles. But then, unless it's all oriented in just the right way, um, then the sides are probably not going to be congruent at all. And if you look, there the uh, the measures here of the sides and none of those are congruent. And same way here, again I made this at a Euclidean equal lateral triangle which has to be equal angular in Euclidean. So this is a, and of course the angles are measured the same way in taxi cab, so this is a an equal angular triangle in both Euclidean and um, taxi cab but it's definitely not got any, it's not even isosceles much less equilateral. Here's a right triangle. Notice the Pythagorean theorem is definitely not valid here. Um, okay. Really, no matter how you orient it, it's not going to be not going to be valid. Triangle inequality is valid in taxi cab. The sum of the lengths of two sides is always greater than or equal to the length of the third side. And so here I've. Uh, basically got something like a side 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 situation set up here and again if these are too short these triangles still not are not these two circles are still not going to meet so the triangle inequality does work the same way okay and so that part does work out but side angle side does not the these this triangle here is some just some given triangle and this triangle over here uh, has a side angle side uh, property with it. Okay, there's my control. So as I go around here, uh, this circle here has radius the same as the blue length, so the blue lengths are congruent. This one has the same length as the red, so the red's congruent. I've made the angle congruent, and yet I can move around here, and we see all kinds of different things for the other side. And so there's all kinds of counterexamples here going on. So um, one of these, if it's oriented the same way, will probably be the, there's probably one that's where these sides are parallel, that they're going to be uh, actually congruent. But pretty much anything else, they're not going to be congruent. Uh, the angles are all going to be congruent. Um, 
well, no, not necessarily even the angles. The angles may not be congruent. So the angles may be not congruent, and the sides, the other side may not be congruent. Okay. Uh, angle side angle. Similarly, this one is constructed. So here's a here's one that's uh, just a general triangle. This one is constructed where it's congruent, so that this this circle has the same length as that one. I think this is a control point here for going around the circle. Uh, looks like I don't have the full construction done all the way around. I just got it for this side. But anyway, you can see there, then I rotated the angle and angle to match the angles here. And so we get the angle angles to match up and the, and the uh, let's see, some of the angles to match up. Well, we get, actually this one has at least two of the angles matching up. And since it is a Euclidean, also a Euclidean triangle, that means the third angle is going to match up. So angle, uh, and it does have one side that's congruent, the blue one. So this, this satisfies the angle-angle-angle condition, the angle-angle side condition, and the angle-side angle condition, or really all three angles in a side. And yet, uh, the triangles definitely uh, not, the triangles are not, not necessarily con congruent. Measuring the right thing. Okay, so these angles are all the same. Yeah. So that's that's matching up. So the angles match up, but the sides we've made sure the two blue sides are the same, but the other sides are different. So when I move things around. Something doesn't look right here. Let me measure this taxi cab distance again. Um, T distance from here to here. Yeah. I didn't think that was measured correctly. Let's fix that. Ah. That's the correct taxi cab distance. That's the right taxi cab distance. And then we measure the taxi cab distance here. Yeah, those should be changing. And notice. Okay, let's keep going here. Side, side, side. Similar, similarly, we can look at this. These are constructed with the side, side, side property. And uh, one of these wants somewhere that will move this around, uh, where we're doing intersection of circles. And uh, at least some of these are going to be showing some positions will show the measurements, and we see that it doesn't work out. Side, side angle does still include the ambiguous case here. So that's definitely not enough, and uh, even even then, uh, there's some maybe some other problems there. Angle length angle does guarantee the other angle, so angle angle guarantees angle angle angle, but not similarity. We can see here these are constructed with actually by doing rotations, they were done with uh, angle angle angle, or get two angles the same, we get the third one the same. But notice that the ratio of side lengths is uh, definitely not the same here. So these three numbers here are definitely not the same. Unless it's oriented just the right direction. Actually oriented the same way as the other one. We might be able to get them the same. So there's maybe some place here where they're the same. But we have to basically get everything parallel to that one. But if they're not parallel... So if they're parallel, if all the sides are parallel to the corresponding sides here, then you may get similar triangles, but uh, otherwise you're not. 
the since the concept of betweenness is the same in both Euclidean and taxi cab, uh, it turns out that in the way the distance metric works, it turns out that the midpoint is the same in taxi cab and in uh, Euclidean geometry. And one of the things that you prove for homework is that if you do a perpendicular bisector of a line segment, that, that turns out to be a, the locus of points or set of points which are equidistant from the two points. But here's what that looks like in this case. Uh, these are the set of points that are, that are equidistant from the two points. And it kind of depends on where we are in our orientation. But it's definitely not a perpendicular bisector of that line segment. So it's kind of kind of weird there. Um, and here's some stuff dealing with, uh, with with conic sections and some stuff dealing with uh, quadrilaterals which we may we may come we may come back to at some point uh, in the future when we talk a little bit more about those concepts. So uh, bottom line is none of these none of these things will will make uh, uh, taxi cab triangles congruent. In fact, you have to have pretty much uh, there, there's pretty much no shortcuts at all. You pretty much got to have all six things. I think there's one combination where you can get um, basically if you have all the sides in two angles, I guess, then you're going to get the third angle. Uh, but other than that, pretty much uh, nothing's going to nothing's going to work. So um, again, one of the things that makes taxi cab geometry um, important for us is to show that the side angle side postulate does not work in it, and therefore the side angle side postulate must be a postulate, or there must be something equivalent to it in Euclidean geometry, um, it's not something that we can prove because taxicab geometry, it works for everything, every proposition and postulate and definition that we have before we introduce the side angle side postulate, it still works. So the side angle side postulate is independent in uh, neutral geometry and unified geometry without, which doesn't include the taxicab.